Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's conditional finality build, we have an endgame setup that is designed around shutdown ultras, champions, tormentors, and pretty much anything caught within our stasis build alike. Similar to Strand and the suspend build that many are familiar with, this setup is going to allow you to stop the movements of enemies with the use of high stasis regen and then combining it with the shotgun to apply an easy kill box that is hard to avoid. Now, the strength of the shotgun is slowly becoming more and more common with players, you want to build around it, and both Stasis and Strand are two of the most easiest subclasses to do so. If you use this setup as shown, you can dominate quite a few GMs no matter the enemy type you face. Plus, with how efficient Hall Frost is, and how you can also get overshield non-stop with perks, you can ultimately be prepared for the next few seasons, challenges, and more. So, to start, you're going to want to have Teutonic Harvest, where shattering Stasis Crystal creates Stasis Shards. These shards will grant melee for you and allies. Then you want to have Diamond Lance where Shatter or Defeated Targets with these abilities create a Diamond Lance. For the subclass, we will need to have a lot of Fragment slots made available, considering that Dust Wheel Grenades will be used a lot here. Both aspects are useful in their own right, with Tectonic providing us with both melee and O shields once the given fragment is provided. Both aspects are useful in their own right, with Tectonic providing us with both melee and O shield once the given fragment is provided while Diamond Lance can instantly freeze targets, and this here allows us to at least have 4 ways to shut down combatants when needed. For the Fragments, Whisper to Shards, where Shattering a Stasis Crystal temporarily boosts your grenade recharge rate. Whisper to Chain, while you are near frozen targets, you take a 40% damage reduction. Whisper of Rhyme, where collecting Stasis Shards grant us a small amount of overshield. Whisper of Conduction, where nearby Stasis Shards tracks to you and Whispers of Durance, which increases the slow effect of your abilities. As shown, we have a lot to tangle with to make the build as safe and flexible as possible in endgame. Ideally, Whispers of Shards, Chain, and Durance are the key fragments to have for spawning the build, as these here will allow Freeze capabilities to linger longer, while also giving us room to safely execute our movement along with Horfrost Z abilities. Everything else after that is flexible depending on the user's wants, but Whispers of Rhyme is also quite good, considering that while we be creating shards to and how, we can safely go about getting them without much effort. Overall, it's going to provide a second layer of defense and will be highly viable when up against snipers, for example. For the mods and stats section, we're going to invest into resilience and discipline, as both of these are the only main things to invest in. With how the build is going to function, we will be both on our toes while also being stationary and staying behind cover as much as possible so we will need to accommodate this with the correct weapons and mods. With Resilience at tier 10, you'll be getting a max damage reduction possible with the build, which is 20%. However, we are going to add to this further since using a shotgun will come with risk. So along with Horse for Set Stasis Wall Effect, we'll be also getting an extra 40% from the Whispers to Change Fragment, which we can use wherever we are. From there, we then have the Whispers of Rhyme Fragments that gives us a small overshield from Stasis Shards collected, and just to be more extra, we'll be using a Void Weapon with a Pulse of Brace on it so that we can get an extra option overshield from mid to long range fights. For RB, do be aware that this is only possible via the Volatile Flow Seasonal mod, and once this is gone, then your options do get limited, but not by a lot. Now as you can see, once we do freeze a target, we will at least have some options available to increase the damage reduction just enough to not be one-shotted out of the blue. Your discipline, however, can stay at tier 7 to 8, as with Whispers of Shards active, we can get back our grenade over a given period as long as we have a full class ability available. From here, there are a number of ways to boost this area further, such as Grenade Kickstart, Innovation, Absolution, and Bomber being the main ones to use. Since a lot of these require orbs of power generation, it will be within your best interest to add on the Void Cypher mod or whatever Elemental Weapon Cypher mod you are choosing as this will help with keeping the grenade region steady and freely available. You can also add on the Solar Cypher mod since Condition of Finality, Solar Attack, can create orbs on kill, but this will require you to give up a heavy or special ammo finder mod slot depending on what you value the most. And then, the armor charges you can go for, such as times 2 charge up mods, are also ideal. However, if you have the space to add on this stacks and stacks mod, then do so, as this will also give you a plus 2 in orbs collected. I would also like to cover the Front of Focus mod as well, 
as this one mod is surprisingly really good for generally a lot of builds. This one mod can give users a plus 30 to discipline stat when you collect an orb of power. And with this, my build has both a tier 10 in discipline and resilience as well when you look at it. If you use orb of power a lot and don't have good armor stats, then by all means do invest into this one mod or multiple mods as this following does make your life a bit more easier. Now, lastly, the weapons being used ideally need to be conditional finality. As the build focuses around the build style of finality, it will be important for you to understand how and where to use the weapon for maximum benefits it offers. The first shot will always freeze, while the second shot will always ignite, so this here is going to allow you to shut down both barrier and unstoppable with a bit more ease. Against overloads, it's a bit risky to use because of how chaotic they can be, but they can be shut down with the weapon easily once stunned. The best way to use weapon is either wait until they come to you, you push and grab them by surprise, or use your stasis grenades to slow them down in place. As long as these three options are kept in mind, then you should be good from there with using the weapon in GMs. After that, your choice of secondary weapon is down to you, but making use of the volatile flow mod with repulsive praise is a good choice to dip your toes in if you have the following perk available. The Veles X Pulse from last season is a good option pick as it can cover grounds that you weren't able to. It has two good damage perks that come straight out of the package and is great for endgame, and pretty much most people should have gotten it considering how easy it was to get it. It may not be everyone's best choice since Hero's Burden and Unforgiven are good choices as well in terms of getting RB, but do remember that you'll want to keep your distance in most GMs and only use your shotgun when the time comes. Just like the strand version we did a while back, the following allows users to close a gap and shut down ultras, champions, tormentors, and even bosses with this flexible finality build. I have been trying this weapon out like mad just to see how good it is, and now that Grandmasters are available, I could further see if there's any room for this sort of exotic in end game. Surprisingly, the exotic is viable in a number of areas and can work with a number of builds, whether you build into it or not. But taking this build as an example, in Proving Grounds in the boss room, I'm able to solo an unstoppable on my own with just the exotic and stasis grenade in hand because of how well it can stun a target. Even though shattering and unstoppable does stun them, this alone has saved me in a number of encounters where I may be facing a ultra who decides that it might be best to just stab me instead of just shoot me point blank, or even a tormentor who goes into a rage mode, or even a barrier to overload champions who want to test my limits. The first hit of the weapon gives you ample time to prep your defense and use Horfrost effect to chain freeze damage to the target, while well, after following up with the second shot will ignite them and cause even more damage afterwards. This weapon alone is perfect for stasis as all we need to do is get a group freeze and place a well timed secondary shot and go from there. It's effective at providing users safety and damage on one and even though wish ender is a rage these days, the shotgun offers us a better risk reward factor that most players could agree on. The only issue with the shotgun and build itself is the risk behind it and how if you're not careful with it, you can become more of a liability than anything. If you want to be good with the shotgun, then be sure to time your movements and only engage if the option is available. Many people are generally sleeping on the weapon in endgame, and it's only a matter of time before it does get picked up. But overall, what do you think of the build? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and support here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, I've brought more stuff like this than I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.